Hello, um, in this video, in this model video, we'll be learning how to do a public sculpture art, uh, something like this, or something like, um, I have some here like this. Uh, it's pretty much a similar technique, and you could put a, a photo on the background if you want. Uh, I think I have another example here, those two. Uh, so it's very similar shape, as you can tell, and oh, this one. This one has a harder edge, but uh, it's pretty much very similar. Uh, and we'll be using some environment lighting here. Uh, we don't have to, but uh, model ship with some. And the one that model ship with, they're actually pretty cool. I think you can buy more from them. Uh, I know it's them who makes, me, who makes them. Smart IBL. IBL means image based lighting. It's the same at, as HDR, high dynamic range. So I haven't been to their site in ages, uh, but there's a lot of thing here. <coughs> and the <coughs> excuse me, the one from Modo um, came from there. So this is a, a page on the comedy Modo. Uh, I think I just typed Smart IBL Modo. So that's the one that ship with Modo. They are pretty cool, but I think you can get more. And uh, here there's some trick. They said this, I learned this. I didn't know that one. Uh, they said to improve, you need to turn on environment input and sampling. And here it's kind of nice. They show you how to control it. And so this is an HDR that light, but also give a background and a drop shadows. So this, you do it in a few click. There's no Photoshop here. Uh, I was just goofing around. And here it's kind of nice because you see the one that comes with Modo. So as you can tell, that's the one I use. This is just the other side. It's inside the, underneath the bridge. And anyway, so I want you to be aware of this. And I Google Smart IBL Modo. And here I just Google Smart IBL. And the website is hdrlabs.com. Let's get started. So f for something like this, if you want to trace an image uh, within Modo, what you could do is maybe use the front view, go add item, backdrop, and give it your image. Uh, you click here, add, load. And uh, where is mine? Uh, I think I put it here. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to really trace it. I'll just show you a little bit. Uh, you go open and the image is here. S uh, you can go full view here. Uh, often when you trace, if you go back to your backdrop, if you're using a top view, you switch it here. But often it's nice to have a little bit of transparency so you can see what you're doing underneath. And now we can start. So we need an empty layer. If you don't have one, you press N. And then we can use the polygon tool. The polygon tool is very useful for many, many things. So we click here and uh, we can start tracing. So me, I would start from the outside. So I would go like this. And whenever you have a spike, you need three points to create a triangle, uh, the smallest polygon. Whenever you have a curve, do it like this, because when we smooth, this will become a curve. So three points will give you a curve. There's no reason to put one here. Maybe afterward for finer detail. But you see here, I would just put one here and one there. It's really nice to start low resolution. In theory, I could stop here and then extrude this, but we could also keep going. Um, so here we have to think it actually stops here. Uh, it's also good if you have a point to maybe put one in front of it. So you could connect them easier. Uh, no, no, I think it's good. You can click on a point to uh, tweak it a little bit. I sometimes like to give things a bit of a curve. And I think we're good. Q. So what we have now is just a polygon. Look, if we hide the bike drop, we can see the polygon. So I can go three to be in polygon. Click B, B to bevel to make a new one, um, to extrude it in a way. And now I can unhide the backdrop. So I can uh, I can keep on clicking on the red or go Q and I can just scale it. Uh, here it doesn't really matter. 
cube because I'm going to have to move them one by one. So to move things, uh, you can select point and drag them. But there's a very cool and fast tool called, um, I think it's under deform, element move. It's the T. Think of T like tagging. Uh, this is really neat. You press T and whatever you, you don't have to leave your finger on it. Whatever you click, you see a polygon, an edge, a point, you can just move it. And then you click on the next one. And I'm not touching the keyboard right now. Uh, so this is an excellent tool. And you can be off a little bit, it's fine. We'll go back to do a final tweaking. I'm on a tiny 30 inch notebook, so it's sometimes hard to see things. Uh, here there's a bump, you see, a kink. Voila, Q to drop it. And at this level, I could actually hide the backdrop. Yeah, turn off this, or you press five to go back to object mode, non-component. And now actually three to be polygon, I need to delete this. So press delete. And right away now, I would give, you can go shift A to center things well and I would go thicken, click and drag, like this, Q to drop. So this is pretty cool. Uh, every point is connected, so I can go tab. And as you can tell, it's uh, really smooth, a bit too smooth. So the way tab work, um, the more lines you have, the more it would retain that edge. So there's few ways you can do this. You could go polygon, select two, press L, do a bevel, scale it. And if now, look, I was to tap this, you see it's pretty flat here and here it's rounded. So that's one way of doing it. Nothing wrong with that way. Um, you could also um, be in edge, add loop, both sides click on an edge and it'll do a perpendicular loop. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, this one might be a hair faster. So I'll make it quite close so it remains that edge. And if you want to do another one, like inside, you hold shift to redo that tool. You see? Shift again. And you just eyeball it. You don't have to be perfect. Turn, shift again. And I think I missed that one. Q, uh, add loop. Voila. Q. So let's, I have some inside here on the top, so I'm good. So if I go tab, you see it's much more solid. Now the issue that we have, it's a bit too flat. So I can go in polygon here, go L. Do the same thing here, shift click, L. And now R for uh, scaling and use the blue. You see, to puff it out, uh, just a hair. We could do the same here, L, and uh, I could go R. And uh, so here I want to do two axes, so I select the blue and puff it out. We can do the same one here, L, and puff it out. Yeah? So obviously there's a lot more you could do. Look, you could grab this, move it a little bit to make it less organic, uh, more organic, not less. Same with this one. You could do this on both sides, if you're gonna see uh, both sides. Um, we could move point. Uh, we could use the, the T huh, uh, to move things around. Uh, we could add lines where we need. I try to stay as low res as I can, so it's easy to tweak things. But uh, here is another very cool tool. We haven't learned Paint and Sculpt yet, but I'll show you one tool in Paint and Sculpt was really nice. If you go F3, the Move tool, this one. 
and the way it works it follow your geometry if you right click you can change and drag you can change the brush size and look what you can do now so now if you click left click you see it moves with a fall off here it's not doing huge because we uh, we don't have enough line but if you are to add line you would be able to really sculpt this uh, an organic in an organic way so you could go go here and make this a little bit more rounded do you see so this is a really great tool shift a to uh, select this a or shift a to bring shift is the one selected if at one point you uh, you decide to add more lines maybe finish the the footing first so many way you can do the footing uh, one way of doing the footing is just to select this actually maybe no maybe those three b to create a new one uh, and here you could scale them so it goes back sh sharp and you can go r and scale in y so they are flat you see and here if you put zero they'll be totally flat then for sure we'll need an edge here to uh, remember the shape so add loop and uh, you we could do both sides that's fine and maybe another one here so it remember the shape on the bottom oh, I forgot there's two of them here so we can just go B and not move that added bunch of line uh, and we could do another line here to uh, so it doesn't run let's try it tab that's not too bad if you want more rounding you go under surface or you use the plus and minus on the numpad I don't have a numpad here and we can go 4 and make sure the render level is 4 so when you go preview but if I want to add more lines if I'm you know pretty much happy with this and I just want to do a minor tweak there's one thing I don't like here this is really thin so I'll go move uh, and look right click and just do this actually maybe a bit bigger voila You could also turn symmetry on here so it does it on both sides. Voila, so it's more rounded. It's not as flat. So, what we can um, also do now, um, we could flatten the, um, the edge here. So, we could go select those two polygons. L to loop. Now I don't really need to go down, so I could uh, control to deselect. Control click. Uh, might need this one. And then we can do B to add a bevel. And uh, we could scale this more or less. Or if I undo control Z. I could also just scale it to the edge and I could almost do a little lip like this so either way there's multiple uh, effects you can do here actually I like that one um, I've got a bit of a bump here um, for the bottom uh, it sounds uh, I like it to stand out a little bit more so I could select those two uh, I was just shift up arrow to grow but I think here we can just do this uh, no actually just those two and uh, we could just scale and make it flat by scaling just here and go zero um, and then we could push it out with W voila so that looks more like a base exact same thing here R for scale so it's the red here we put 0 Q to drop W to move and push it out a little bit more now another thing I can do it's select 
those two actually two like this go L two like that L and now I could scale in the width to make it more bulgy so it looks more solid even a hair more and here I'm gonna drop that and on this one we could also try a B I uh, don't know if I like that. Voila. Okay, I think for now it will be good enough. Um, now, because we've done this, we can also use this for texturing. So to apply a global uh, texture, I'll go M, change the name. So I could call this uh, Metal, sure. Then I'll go in Polygon and I'll select my Stripe, L, deselect what I don't need. No. Voila. Uh, we could almost grab the inside. I could have flattened the inside or rounded more. It's in between the both. Uh, let's grab it. So L. And now we can... Oh, oops. Should have done this before. Voila. Now we can go M and call that uh, Stripe. So, for the actual base, we could do also another one like this. L, and we could go shift up arrow to grow it. And call that base. Voila. So, now we can go in the preset mode. So, what I was saying is that you can also do this. And go R, or uh, maybe go the other way to make it more round push it in, there's a lot of effect you could do here. Voila. Um, and now we can go F6 for the presets. I'll go so F8 for the preview. Make sure uh, this camera is set here so it match this one. Voila. Keep this uh, pretty small so your render time will be faster. And uh, now we can go on our shade and we have uh, each uh, mask that we created. Materials. And we could start with metal. Uh, metal and I'll go bronze. And maybe uh, architectural or burnish. Doesn't really matter. So I'll drag and drop it here. Uh, wrong one. Uh, stripe. Let's put it here. Here, at least it'll be very precise. Voila. Don't get a weird surprise. Aluminum. And uh, I forgot which one I used, if it was uh, burnished or brushed. Let's try that one. Voila. Don't know if I'm a big fan. You can see I really <laughs> made it. Uh, it looks like leather. Um, we'll tweak this more in a few seconds. Um, let's try that one. No, we'll, uh, we'll keep that one. And the base, uh, there's some very nice under painted. Uh, there's some quite good, uh, even here, a preset. Let's try this one. So metallic, I'm not sure, maybe this one. And the base. Voila. Um, now the main thing we're going to have to do 
it's bring one of uh, those environment lighting so we can do this with um, going in the F6 and here we can go environment smart IBL and that's the one I was using so double click and those one are very powerful because they bring the lighting but they'll bring also a shadow caster you see and a background image so uh, it's pretty uh, if you think about it it's pretty powerful so they are all here so it's uh, one map is for the reflection so you see it's reflecting very high too we could uh, tune that down to 1.8 fine tune this a bit uh, the background is this one but we could also separate in Photoshop so that one and for the lighting it's this one was pretty strong too so what you could do it's uh, change the camera but you could also you could scale your objects so it match better but you could also here rotate this on Y and that's the entire environment so the background will move but the main thing here is that the lighting moves you see the shadow and now it's lighting from the side so that could be an interesting uh, tweak to do so that's what I was doing in the uh, in the final render. Uh, I think I'm okay with this one. It's very bright, but uh, so we could try to find a interesting angle. It is also floating here, so we could move it down a bit. Yeah, let's do something like this. And uh, now we can play more with the so if you click here it'll tell you which uh, so here I can see that it's uh, very reflective the brushed aluminium so maybe I could tune it down to 80 80 just to remove a bit and it's very rough so think of this as brush metal so if you go 40 it'll be even more brush metal a bit like a MacBook Pro but if you go to two or three it'll be very polished almost like a mirror surfaces um, so keep this in mind uh, maybe 15 here I want a little bit not too much if I click here I'll get the bronze so same thing the bronze is quite reflective and it's polished a little bit so if we want more we can go five and it'll be like almost like chrome uh, let's go 10 Uh, sometime here you could add a, a bit of uh, ink uh, I don't know if here the ink will be a good uh, flow but I'll show it to you um, add custom cell edge and you could do it per material instead of doing it everywhere and you see it's gonna slow down but it's gonna trace a line around and sometimes it can help make things pop up a bit this is how wide here I think two works but I usually go often one or one five this is the um, so here I'll go one six this is the quality here of the ink 10 and you can play a bit with um, angle edges so if you go down to 80 50 20 it would remove some of the front line and sometime in architecture you get too many uh, too much of this so it could be a cool effect I just don't know if here it's uh, that useful uh, what else can I show for your final if you go under the final you can go 10% of tone map that removes a little bit of the um, uh, the saturation and you can use bloom that would make it glow but the bloom you'll only see it on the final render and uh, maybe a bit of vignette so zero vignette mean the this is very bright and um, 80 percent will darken a little bit the edges uh, let's try without the cell yeah i think here actually it's better without if you really want to smooth your object you can uh, select the object go on the surface 
and here you can see it's subdivided four time and render so you could even go five if you want that should be pretty smooth uh, what else um, for the final render settings uh, you could even push this to 16 if you want but the most important will be 0.2 here instead of 0.5 the reflection sample it's the quality here the noise 256 or 512 sometimes I even go a thousand two thousand um, and the environment here is important because it's the the images so we could even go 512 the HDR um, and this is the noise in the shadow so same thing 256 or 512 and one thing I learned reading the IBL uh, documentation is that this should be on this will help a lot for the rendering voila and we I think for this video I cover most of it and now we can go render uh, render and that will take a while voila um, and here you can uh, see the bloom you see with it without so here there so obviously it's too strong so to get less you need to go higher so 200 and you see even more you can go four five hundred the vignette is here and the tone map is here and then save TIFF JPEG PNG voila